Hello friends, I hope you are ready to relax and get a little cozy and do some painting with me this fine day. I'm gonna be painting some sketches I did in my sketchbook with acrylic gouache from Holbein. I got a set of these for Christmas and I am obsessed with them. I was at first using them just really um, like for flat opaque colors and then I realized how much they actually are like regular gouache and mix beautifully with water so I've been really playing around with getting some nice um, like unpredictable gouache kind of textures with them and I'm just just smitten with these paints they're so nice so the day that I drew these sketches was like January 27th or something like that so a couple weeks away from Valentine's Day which is where the inspo came from Valentine's Day is such an interesting holiday because I feel like people have such mixed feelings about it. Um, like some people are like, to heck with this holiday, it's just like Hallmark bullshit. <laughs> and some people are like, I just love love. And um, that's me, I'm in the second group. <laughs> I just want to take any excuse to like mushy squishy love the people that I love and Valentine's Day is great for that. I was thinking about what I wanted to talk about for this video because I wanted this to be like a we're hanging out together, let's do some art together kind of video. Um, and the topic of self-love came to mind because like Valentine's Day is all about love but I feel like self-love like although i feel like it's talked about more now than it probably used to be it's just like endlessly so important and can always use more talking time so i thought i would share some things that i've learned on my lifelong journey to be able to self-love myself properly um because it's like hasn't been very easy and i'm sure i'm not the only one out there who has struggled with it I feel like pretty much as long as I can remember, I've really struggled with self-esteem and I mean like honestly who hasn't? Like I feel like everybody does at least in some dimension of their life, whether it's how you look or what your personality is like or a specific like activity or some aspect of your intelligence. I just really feel like as far as I've seen and experienced, it really seems to show up in some dimension in pretty much everyone's life. And I think that can be seen as a good thing because instead of feeling like there's something wrong with us because we're self-conscious, we should just be able to look around and say everybody else has these issues in their own ways and there's nothing wrong with me for feeling this way. For me personally, I feel like it kind of evolved and moved to different aspects of my life as I aged. Like when I was really young, well, not really young, kind of more like teenage years, it was really focused on like how I looked and feeling like I was too fat or not pretty enough or like the same things that pretty much every teenage girl deals with. And then as I got older, not that I don't ever feel self-conscious about how I look, but it definitely kind of moved more into being self-conscious about my own personality and feeling like I wasn't interesting enough or cool enough or funny enough for the people around me or to be worthy of what I wanted in life and I'm not admitting this to you because I want anyone to feel sorry for me or leave me comments saying like oh you're great don't feel bad I like just want to validate the experiences of other people who go through similar thought patterns because I really think it's normal and it's it's okay to feel that way and the more we hear other people admit it the more we'll really believe it but I also bring it up because I wanted to share something that I kind of came to realize in the past year or so. It kind of came to me in like a weird epiphany sort of way um, where I was in this place where I was in a really low point with my self-esteem and I do notice it comes in waves. Like I'll have months where I feel fine and then suddenly a two week period where I just feel awful and unworthy of anything and just kind of inconsolable, like even if someone happened to say something nice about me, it wouldn't make me feel any better. So at one point when I was in one of these lows, I just remember thinking to myself, I don't want to talk to anyone about what I'm feeling because it feels kind of shameful and it won't feel good to get the thoughts out and I don't think it's going to make me feel better, but I just wish I could have the encouragement of a friend right now, like I could use the kind, compassionate things that my friends would say to me. And then this other voice in my brain was like, 
why are you not just talking to yourself like that? Like, why are you sitting here wishing someone would be a voice of compassion while being so critical of yourself and judging every thought that comes into your head? So I just decided to start whenever I caught the voice in my head being critical, I just told myself, talk to yourself like you're talking to a friend. Show yourself the same compassion that you would want to extend to other people. And over time of repeatedly telling myself that when I caught myself self-criticizing, oh my gosh, it's made such a difference. It definitely wasn't instant. It has taken a while and it's continuing to get better as I repeatedly work on it. But it's slowly training my brain that you're not allowed to talk about yourself like that. You're not allowed to say these things to yourself in the same way that like when you're growing up, you're taught how to be nice to other people. I'm teaching myself how to be nice to myself. And honestly, it feels kind of silly to say that I even need, this is something I even need to work on, that it isn't just something that I've always realized. And I'm sure some people listening to this are like, yeah, duh. <laughs> but I think like for me, at least, it kind of stemmed out of always being a really big perfectionist and always putting really high expectations on myself that I felt like I needed to be self-critical in order to keep motivating myself. But when I really step back and question that, like if I'm gonna try and motivate someone else in my life that I love and care about, I don't do it by being a jerk, I do it by lifting them up. And it works the same on a personal level and I don't know why it took me 26 years to realize this. So I hope if you're listening to this and this is something you haven't realized yet that this can accelerate that process for you a little bit because you deserve as much love and affection towards yourself as you show to the people in your life that you love. Watching this back is making me really want some chocolate covered strawberries. <laughs> I haven't had them in years. My mom used to make them a bunch when I was a kid. And they're so good. Well, yeah, definitely gonna do that soon. Maybe I'll make them for Valentine's Day. Or I actually really wanted to make, last year I made a recipe that was like, kind of like a shortbread or sugar cookie that had some icing on top, but inside, um, the inside had like um, a maraschino cherry and also you used the maraschino cherry juice to make the icing. So it was like a cherry flavored sugar cookie and oh my God, they were so good. And they were the perfect Valentine's Day cookie. So I guess this Valentine's Day, I'm making those and chocolate covered strawberries. So I've been playing with these paints for about a month now and I feel like I'm really kind of starting to hit my stride with them and when I make pieces with them they're more smooth and kind of coming out the way that I'm hoping and picturing them to. I'm also getting better at mixing the paint and getting the color that I want without having to waste a bunch of excess paint in the process, which is usually what happens. I can like get the color that I want but I have to <laughs> dump out so much paint to make it work and I'm learning that to do a page like this, the amount of paint you actually use is so, so small. And this paint is so expensive that I'm like really trying to not use any more than I need to. <laughs> The song that's playing right now is called Corny Old Love Song and I just love it so much. The title fits so well. It kind of reminds me of the Toy Story theme song. I'm not really sure why, but it makes my heart happy.
I think it's kind of funny that I recently got my first Sugar House Ceramic Co. palette, which is what I'm using here. I, I really love it, but I accidentally ordered their glossy white instead of like the speckled pattern that my little brush rest you can see in the corner is, and which is what I wanted the palette to be as well. But it, it's still cute. I'm just learning to love it for what it is, even though it wasn't what I was expecting. Um, but anyway, so I ordered the brush rest to go with it, thinking it would match, and it doesn't, but it's fine. <laughs> and um, It's funny that I was like, oh, this brush rest will come so much in handy all the time. I'm like, where do I put my brushes that I'm still using that are so wet? And then lately, I've only been using this one brush that I got. Like, I use the same brush for this whole piece, so the brush rest just sits there, not being used. Um, but if you're curious, the brush is Princeton brand, Princeton Select, and it's uh, number two Filbert. That's what it says on the handle. And I really like it. It's, uh, I was finding it was giving me the perfect amount of like, had enough like body to it that I could fill in the bigger flatter areas and get some nice texture, but also the end is firm enough that I could do my little more line worky thinner type things like what I'm doing right here with the heart so it's a good brush I'm a big fan Is my first time painting flowers with this new paint and this brush and um, it turned out kind of interesting like I had a little bit of on this flower that I'm doing right here um, a little more blending that I want than I wanted to and it ended up being a little bit fuzzy but then I ended up liking what it looked like in the end and the one at the top ended up to me kind of looks weirdly realistic and I was able to get some really fine lines on it that um, looked kind of cool and then it's funny because my goal initially was like for all three of them to look like the same flower from different angles but then they all looked completely different <laughs> but uh such is life these things happen Something that I do a lot when I'm working with, well, paint in general, most paints that I work with, um, but this stuff in particular is I find it really helpful to have a paper towel handy, especially when I'm going for these more like watered down looks, because with this paint, it's really easy to pick up more pigment than you want, and so I just have a paper towel to kind of dab some of that off, and then I'll like wet my brush after that and go to the page and have more of the watery um, look that I'm going for. This red and pink mug with the heart-shaped steam is, I think, my favorite thing on the page. I, as I'm saying that now, I'm thinking about making it into a sticker, maybe? Like, I could scan this into my computer and then put it on my iPad and, like, clean it up in Procreate and turn it into a sticker. That would be cute. Yeah, maybe I'll do that.
I found that to get the shade of green that I want, it looks really good to mix this sap green with a little bit of the burnt sienna that both come in this Rebecca Green gouache set. Um, I just find I really like a more, like, I don't know how else to describe it, but like a dirty green, not like a pure, like foresty green. I love that color objectively, but in my artwork, I really like like a, a warmer, more like sagey, almost like a yellowy green. Mm, so good. I definitely did a lot of experimenting in this piece. Like with these, this flower and its stem and leaves, I went for more of that flat look that is just like plain acrylic look. Um, and then when I did the leaves of the other flowers and the stem of the other flower, I watered it down so I could kind of see them side by side on the same page. Oh, and I did more like flat acrylic on the strawberry stems too. But I can't, point out enough how much I love that this paint will do both of those things that I don't have to get two different paints to get the look that I want on the page with lots of variety and texture. It's just incredible. I kind of regret not getting these paints sooner, but I'm also just very much enjoying it and glad I have them now. I grabbed my Prismacolor Premier pencils to do kind of the final touches and add in any little bits of like line work or shading that I still needed. Although I'm finding that I bought myself like just kind of a random selection of Prismacolors that were generally in the color palette I like to work in, but I'm still finding that I have so few that I'll be like, okay, I need this shade and then I don't quite have the right color. So I just kind of make do with the closest thing, which makes like, I'm sure nobody else notices cause they still look relatively good in the art piece, but I often look at it with like a really close eye being like that color isn't quite right. But uh, this one is a pretty close match for what I wanted for those little chocolatey squares.
grab my kneadable eraser to try and gently pick up some of the extra pencil that was left around the edges. I couldn't get any of it up from like under the paint, which makes sense because it's acrylic paint, but still cute, still happy with it. I used like a some extra red around the hearts to kind of cover up where you could see my pencil marks for um, drawing those out. And I actually, it's one of those like happy accidents where I really liked what it looked like with the hearts outlined anyways, kind of like in a loose, messy outline. So they looked kind of, had lots of character. I was pretty happy with the final piece. It's obviously not perfect, but I really try and like embrace that my sketchbook work is not gonna be perfect because when I work digitally, I tend to really overdo it. Um, so I had a good time. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did and you wanna show me some support, I will love you forever. You can leave a little like or hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Thanks again for being here. You are the best. I hope to see you in another video soon, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.